Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah Bahasham Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of Le'aki am out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity. Doing the work is Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah has commanded you to do so he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line goes back to you being a so called black, Hispanic, and Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashimi I was shot with another video. And this time this video is going to be based upon a video Elder, Elder Apostle Dehar did where this Christian, he was talking about the scriptures having no understanding of what the scriptures are talking about or having, any or having no understanding of what's going on. Because he was talking about how God is against slavery and... Uh, so forth and so on. That slavery wasn't in the Bible. It was a it was a bad thing in the, in the eyes of God. So forth and so on. But the thing is, according to what the Bible says, according according to the narrative of the scriptures, according to the words of Yahweh, the Heavenly Father Yahweh, the Lord and the Savior Yahweh Shai, He's coming back to enslave you heathen nations, as it is written. You see. See the Christians don't go into that man because they try to they they try to they do this thing with the scriptures where they pick and choose what they want to uh, talk about or go into or believe in. When us as Hebrew Israelites, we believe in the whole text, man. Everything that's written from front to back because we know and understand that these are the words of the heavenly Father Yahweh. And his word is going to stand and he's going to be he's going to do all his pleasure. And his pleasure is to do what? To give you heathen nations all of you nations outside of the nation of Israel over into the hands of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, the one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, man. So we're going to start right here in Psalms chapter 2, verse 8. No, let's start in 7. I will declare the decree. Yahweh have said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Now who is the begotten son of the Most High? The only begotten son of the Most High? The, the, yeah, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, man. The one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Now it goes on to say, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Do you hear that? The most I told you how was that he was going to give the heathen over to him for an inheritance. As what? As property, as possessions. You see? That's what an inheritance is. Let's go into that word inheritance real quick. It goes into, look at that, possession, property, inheritance. That's what you heathen nations are to the Lord and Savior. And guess what? We are his co-heirs, Lord, whether we continue to endure. So if Yahweh Shah received the heathen for an inheritance, we are going to receive an heathen, uh, the heathen for an inheritance as well. Because what? That's a part of the inheritance of the nation of Israel, man. That's what the scriptures say. That's the narrative. Of, that's a part of the narrative of the Bible, man. Ruling over you heathen nations So the Most High is all for slavery There will be slavery In the kingdom of heaven This is what our Lord is coming to do To put shackles and chains Upon all of you heathen man So going back Let's finish it out It says what Psalm chapter 2 verse 8 Ask of me And I shall give thee the heathen For, an inheritance, for thine inheritance and the other, uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. This is what we're going to be doing to you in the kingdom of heaven. I say we because what? Once again, we are the co-heirs of Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, we continue to suffer with him. Because it tells you in Romans 9. Oh, no, no, no. What's Romans 9? Maybe Hebrews 9. Romans 
Romans 8, so like it. This is Romans 8. And I said, like I said, I said we because Yahweh Shai has inherited you heathen for a position. And like I said, Lord willing, we continue to endure. We're going to be made joint heirs with him in the kingdom of heaven. So everything Yahweh Shai receives, we're going to receive it as well. And that includes you heathen nations for a possession as property. Romans 8 and 17 says what? And if Ch matter of fact, start at 16. Romans 8 and 16. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. These words resonate only with Israelites, man. That's why we can cleave unto the true narrative of it. You see, that shows us that you Christians, especially you Edomite Christians, have nothing to do with the scriptures. Because you try to you try to shun different parts of the narrative of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. When we bring out the full narrative, man, telling you everything, we're giving you an understanding of what the Most High's will is, man. Only the Most High's children is going to do that. You see, and who are the Most High's children? The Israelites. And the Israelites only. Verse 17 says what? And if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High, and joint heirs with Mashiach Yahawashah, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So if we continue to endure, like Yahawashah told us what? He that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. If we endure unto the end, man, Overcoming all trials and tribulations through our faith and our belief and our hope in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, we're going to be made joint heirs with Yahweh Shah in the kingdom of heaven. Which means what? We're going to receive the heathen for a possession. You see? The Most High is all about slavery, man. Yahweh Shah is coming to enslave you heathen nations, man. And to show you we're going to be joint heirs, let's jump to Revelation chapter 2, down to 27. Matter of fact, we'll start at 25. Revelation 2 and 25, it says what? But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nation. So we have to continue to hold on to this truth. We have to continue to uh, have confidence. You see? And Yahweh Ba'a Shem Yahweh Shah. And Yahweh Shah is going to give us power over the nations. Which is what? Power over you heathens. And what did he, what did he tell us we're going to do? Verse 27, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And when did he receive that? Back in Psalm chapter 2. He said, we overcome and endure. He's going to give us power over the nations, and we're going to rule over you with the rod of iron, man. When you go into this rod of iron, let's see what it goes into. When you go into the word rod, all right? It goes into rod dose. It says, uh, let's get to the point. Uh, definition B, when applied to kings with a rod of iron indicates the severest, most rigorous rule. So we're about to rule over you heathen nations in the kingdom of heaven with great rigor, man. This is what Yahweh Shah is coming to establish on the earth. You see? This cuts that bullshit about Yahweh Shah coming to save all nations. That's not what's written. That is not what's written in the scriptures, man. Salvation is not for you heathen. Salvation is only for the remnant of the nation of Israel, those who believe and have faith upon the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. That's who salvation is for. And you heathen have no part in that. Your part to play upon the planet Earth is to be servants and slaves unto the Israelites forevermore. You see? And this is what Yahweh Shah is coming to set up in the earth, man. Because when you go to Revelation 19, and we'll start at 11. It says what? And I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse. So that white horse represents what? A chariot, a so-called UFO. He just he described it as being white because it was pure. He described it as a horse because what? A horse represents power. So it said he when he, be, he I saw heaven open and behold, a white horse which is pure power. This is how our Lord and Savior is returning, man, with pure power and glory, as he's promised to do. And it says what? And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And he, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Because that's what Yahweh Shah is coming to do, man. He's coming to bring righteousness to the earth. He's coming to wage war upon you heathen nations. Beginning with you Edomites, man. You see? This is what the Lord Yahweh Shah is coming to do. This fairy tale that you've, you've concocted about Yahweh Shah coming to love all people. And accept all people unto himself. And everybody can be saved. That's all bullshit, man. You see? That's not the narrative of the scriptures. Yahweh Shah is coming to get busy, man. Yahweh Shah is coming to do away with wickedness in the earth. 
Yahweh is coming to enslave you heathen nations, as we're going to see as we move down into this chapter. Verse 12 says what? His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Why, why are there many crowns upon Yahweh Shai's head, man? Because he's coming to take down you heathen rulers, man. Beginning with you Edomites. The people who, are, who have the, the most power upon the planet Earth. That's why many crowns are upon his head, man. Once again, Yahweh Shai is coming to make war. It says what? And he, had on, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself going into his rank, man. Verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of the Most High. Why was his vesture dipped in blood? That represents the slaughter, the great slaughter Yahweh Shah is about to uh, uh, do in the earth, man. Because he's coming to judge you people according to your wickedness, man. So a lot of you people are about to be put to death when the Lord returns. You see that? A lot of you are about to be put to death when the Lord returns, man. That's why I says what? That the, 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 the slain of the Lord shall be many, man. From one end of the earth to the other end of the earth, man. Now verse 14 says what? And the armies which are in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That goes into the angels who are driving these chariots, the so-called UFOs, man. Because Yahweh Shah is coming back with the fleet and armada. <laughs> you see? Of angels, man. In the chariots. A great Israelite invasion from the heavens is coming, man. Verse 15 says what? And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. You hear that? This sharp sword that Yahweh shot, that, that's coming out of his mouth goes, goes into those laser beams. Says what? That what? That with it he should smite the nations, man. He's going to smite you nations with the weapons that are coming out of his chariot, man. It tells you the same thing in 2nd Edges 13. He said he's coming to smite the nations. He didn't say he's coming to love all people. Who are the nations? All of the nations outside of the nation of Israel. Salaki, all of the people, all of you nations outside of the remnant of Israel because Yahweh is coming to put a lot of you two-thirds to death as well, man, for your refusal to repent. So you're counted as a heathen nation right now anyway. But he said he's coming to smite, man. It didn't say he was coming to love all people. It said he's coming to smite. What is the word smite going to, man? That he should smite the nation. Patasso, right? Get to the point. To stroke, smite with the sword. Hey, it tells you that Isaiah 66. I'll get that next. To, to stroke, smite with the sword, to afflict, to visit with evils, etc., as with a deadly disease. To smite down, cut down, to kill, to slay. This is what Yahweh Shah is coming to do to you heathen nations, man. And all of you Israelites who refuse to repent. He's coming to destroy you, man. He is coming to destroy you. You see? This is what the Lord Yahweh Shah is coming to do. And we can get the precept of that in Isaiah. 66 starting at 15 man it says what for behold the lord would come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire that's what we're reading in revelation 19 man this is how the lord is coming back angry pissed off with great fury and wrath you see verse 16 says what for by fire and by his sword will the lord plead with all flesh and that goes to judge all flesh, man. You see? You're either about to receive salvation or be condemned to death, man. And it says what? And the slain of the Lord shall be many. You see? Those who the most who Yahweh Shah puts to death is going to be many, man. Once again, from one end of the earth until the other end of the earth, man. That's what's about to come. That's what Yahweh Shah is bringing. So going back to Revelation 19. It says what? And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. So he's coming to smite. I put a whole lot of you heathen to death and he's coming to rule you with a rod of iron, man. This is what Yahweh Shah is coming to do. That's why this lesson is entitled what? Yahweh Shah is coming to enslave you heathen nations, man. As it is written, we dealing with the narrative of the Bible, man. 
We dealing with what the scriptures say. We dealing with what the heavenly father has said, man. What his will is. And this shows you that the Most High is all about slavery, man. He's all he's for. It. Let's get that word rod of iron again. To show you how the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah, is coming to rule over you heathen. Jump into the poor definition B. When applied to kings with a rod of iron indicates the severest, most rigorous rule. This is how the Lord and Savior, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, whose true name is Yahweh Shah, this is what he's coming to do. This is how he's coming to rule you heathen, man. With a rod of iron, the most rigorous rule, man. Hardcore slavery is coming to you heathen. Especially you Edomites, man. You so-called white people. So it says what? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fistness and the wrath of the almighty power. And he have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. Like, you know this is talking about the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, man. You see, so when you read about slavery and how, how Israel is going to have the heathen enslaved in the kingdom of heaven. That's all made possible because of Yahweh Shah. It was given unto him first. You see, and if we endure, we're going to be partakers in that, man. That's why the scriptures on slavery are written. Because it was a promise the Most High made to Yahweh Shai. And by default, the nation of Israel is going to be a part of receiving, you see, you heathen for an inheritance. So let's get a couple on that, man. Matter of fact, let's go to the law on it. <laughs> because the Most High has a law on us ruling over you heathen nations, man. What is that? Do the, uh, no, no, no. Leviticus 25 and 44, okay. <laughs> Leviticus 25 and 44, let's, let's, uh, yeah, right here. This, so this is the law. This is the laws that the Most High gave unto the Israelites, showing you that, hey, we are going to rule over you heathen in the kingdom of heaven. Yahweh Shah is going to see to it. To fulfill what? To fulfill the will of the Heavenly Father, what it's all about anyway. That's all it's about, fulfilling the will of the Most High. So Leviticus 25 and 44 says what? Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which are slaves, slave men and slave women, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them ye shall buy bondmen and bondmaids. This is talking about all the nations outside of the nation of Israel. You are made to be what? Our slaves, man. And that's what is going to be in the kingdom of heaven. You see? So this narrative that you Christians are pushing that the Most High doesn't allow slavery, that he doesn't condone slavery. Well, according to these laws that the Most High has given to the children of Israel, he does condone slavery. He did tell us that we can have you heathen for bondmen and bondwomen. And Yahweh Shah is going to make sure that happens in the, when he returns, man. Verse 45 says what? Moreover, of the children of, of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them you shall buy of their families... That are with you, which they beget in your land, and they shall be your possession. What does possession go into? A property, man. Something that you own. And that's what you heathen nations are. You are our property. We own you. You see? Then it goes on to say, verse 46, And you shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. You see that? They shall be your bondmen forever. That's what you heathen nations are. Bondmen and bondwomen to the nation of Israel forever. Slaves, man. You see? That's what you are. That's all you'll ever be. But it says what? But over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. You see that? So we can't put the, the Israelites into slavery. We can only rule with rigor, as we as we just read. With hey, well, that rod of iron goes into what? The most rigorous rule. That's talking about over you heathen nations, man. That's why when you go to Isaiah 14, this lets you know that this is not talking about heathen right here. Let's let's read it real quick. Isaiah 14 and 1. For Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So how do we know this is talking about this is talking about Israelites? You see? 
who woke up from that Gentile state of mind when they heard this word being preached and they had faith in Yahweh Shah. They were cleaving unto the house of Jacob. Why? Because they are Israelites. They are not actual heathen. Then it goes on to say verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids. You see that? How do we know this is not talking about us ruling over Israelites as servants and handmaids? We just got the law. Over the children of Israel, she, over the over the children of Israel, we should not rule with rigor, man. Because they're our brothers. We can't rule over Israelites with rigor in the kingdom of heaven. So this lets us know this is talking about you heathen who are going to be our servants and handmaids in our kingdom, man. That's just what it is. That's what the Most High is established in the earth. And that's what it's going to be when Yahweh Shai returns, man. It says what? And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. You hear that? So all of you heathen nations who are oppressing us, we're going to rule over you in the kingdom of heaven. Yahweh Shai is going to see to it. Why? It's because you have been given over into his hands as an inheritance from the heavenly father Yahweh. This is the Most High's will. Once again, the Most High is all for slavery, man. And you heathen, you heathen are going to find that out the hard way. Verse 3 says what? And it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah will give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. You hear that? So the Most High is going to bring an end, of, uh, end of our captivity. And he's going to put you heathen nations in the captivity, man. As it tells you in Jeremiah 30 and 7. Oh, it's like 30 and 16. It says what? Therefore all that devour, therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, you can go read about our adversaries in Psalms 83. That's all of the nations outside of the nation of Israel. They are adversaries, man. They are enemies. It says what? And all of thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Why? It's because the Most High has promised it to Yahweh Shah. And Yahweh Shah has promised it to his men that endure all trials and tribulations for his namesake, man. You see? That's what's, that's what's coming. That's what's coming, man. Why is this written if the Most High is not for slavery? Why is this written if the Most High is all against slavery and it's bad and so forth and so on, man? It's written because the Most High is all for it. It's, it's, it's written because the Most High ordained it to be. You think we're going to be in the kingdom of heaven doing work? No, man. When you when you have a kingdom, when you're in rulership, you have slaves, man. The elite of Esau have slaves. Everybody that's not a part of the elite, you are a slave. You are a servant. <laughs> Your slave masters, the elites of the nation of Edom, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, so forth and so on, man. And the same, it's going to be the same way when we're back in power. As it is written, it goes on to say, And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. And all of you heathen nations have prayed upon the nation of Israel. So all of you are going to slavery. But we mainly focus on you Edomites. Why? It's because you're the nation that put the most hell upon us. And we can't wait to get you back, man. You see? And, and we are going to get you back. As it is written. So let's get this and I wrap it up on this one, man. To show you that the most High is all for slavery, man. Let's get Psalms 149. And we'll start at 5. It says what? Let the saints be joyful in glory. Now, who are the saints? The saints... Are the Israelites Matter of fact Let's jump back one verse I'm in one chapter Psalms 148 and 13 Let them praise the name Of Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shah For his name alone Is excellent His glory is above The heaven and the, His glory is above Earth and heaven He also exalted The horn of his people The praise of all his saints Even the children of Israel A people near unto him Praise ye Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shah So the saints are the Israelites. So it goes on to say, Psalms 149 and 5, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Talking about in the kingdom of heaven, man. Because we're going to be in our rest. So we're going to be singing for joy each and every day we wake up, man. Just, just in a state of, of, of joy and peace forevermore. You see? Verse 6 says what? Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth 
and a two-edged sword in their hand. To do what? To execute vengeance upon the heathen. You see that? To execute vengeance upon the heathen. For what? For what you've done unto us, man. This shows you that you heathen nations have nothing to do. <laughs> well, the Most High has nothing to do with you heathen nations, man. The Most High ain't coming to save you. The Most High is about to allow his people, the children of Israel, to get vengeance upon you heathen. All of you. That's what's written, man. This ain't changed. The Most High doesn't change. The Most High's word doesn't go out void, man. If he's, if he's spoken these things, best believe he's going to bring them to pass. So Psalms 149 and 7. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Which are who? You heathen nations. Verse, what else are we going to do? Verse 8 says what? To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. What is that going to? Slavery, captivity for you heathen nations. Your king, you and your kings, man. This is what we're about to do upon this planet earth, man. According to the will of the Most High. This is what Yahweh Shah is coming to establish in the earth. Yet the Lord Yahweh Shah is coming to enslave you heathen nations. Why? Because it's the will of the heavenly father Yahweh. That's why. Psalms 149 and 8. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Just like you've done unto us, man. Go back and look at the history. And all of you heathen have profited off of us being in captivity, man. So it's only right that you go into captivity. Verse 9 says what? To execute to execute upon them the judgment written This honor have all his saints This honor have all his saints Which are who? The Israelites Praise ye Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah So this is what Yahweh Shah is bringing man This is what Yahweh Shah is coming to accomplish He has to because it's the will of the Most High Matter of fact I get, I get this one man Revelation 13 Shit Revelation 13 and 9 it says what? If any man have an ear let him hear he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Who led who led the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans into captivity? The so-called white race. And guess what? All of you heathen profited off of us being in captivity, man. This is how you been this is how you nations became so rich. Off of the back blood, sweat, and tears of the Israelites, man. You see? So this is what all you nations have to look for. In the kingdom of heaven, because you all partake in it, man. Revelation 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. All this is coming upon all of you heathen. The beginning with you Edomites, man. Because all you do is rape, rob, and murder our people. So this is a part of the judgment that's coming upon you. And there is no way you can get up out of this, man. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And this is what we're patiently and faithfully waiting upon, man. For your, for your howl about Shimi Hawashah to put you into our hands. And it's going to come to pass. You see? Once again, the Lord Yahawashah is coming to enslave you heathen, man. As it is written, the self Yahweh Shimi Hawashah. So with that, I'm going to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahawashah Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. According to the Bible, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashimi Awashah, and a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful to let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bashimi Awashah has commanded you to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Baba.